What's going on guys, it's your boy Ethan. Hope you're having a great day. We're back here in New Hampshire playing some poker and uh, I guess good news, bad news. This is gonna be one of the last times we'll be here in New Hampshire playing poker for the upcoming future. The good news is that we're going to Vegas and we're going to our very first WSOP, so that'll be a lot of fun. Good news is that I don't have to drive an hour and a half each way to play poker anymore, but there'll be a ton of games going on in Vegas for the WSOP, so that'll be a lot of fun. A bunch of tournaments, a bunch of cash games. It'll be very exciting in the next couple videos moving on in the next few weeks because there'll be a ton of poker videos in action to come. Secondly, I just wanted to go over, everyone's asking me about this stupid little pinky finger. Um, I had a mallet finger. For those who don't know what it is, there's a torn tendon on one of my knuckles and I haven't been able to bend this forever and I'm getting close to bending it and big shout out to Jonathan who is in my Instagram DMs for diagnosing it and giving me some tips on how to make this better because I haven't been able to bend and flex this pinky for months now as you already know so just to answer those questions now you know but there's a 510 going on in there let's try to hop in there and get in on the action should be a pretty big game here in New Hampshire so I'm done rambling let's get into the video let's get into the hands <laughs> Starting things off in this 2-5 game, we are joining the must-move table and we're only playing four-handed. First hand in, we have 10-8 of clubs in the big blind. There's an unknown straddle and action folds to me. It's a good hand to play, so I put in a raise to $40 out of position and the straddler makes the call. Off to a flop of a king-queen-8-1 club on a board that should favor me a lot more. We also have a pair. I put in a bet of $40. And for 40, he makes the call again. Going to a turn, which comes the three of hearts. It doesn't change a single thing and certainly can check sometimes, but I think we can continue applying pressure as he didn't raise the flop. So maybe only has one pair. I continue with another bet of $125 and for 125, he thinks it's a fair price. Makes the call again with about 475 behind. Let's go to a river, which is the five of hearts. Well, we already committed to this pot here on the turn by betting, and we can't win with an eight, I don't think. Let's apply maximum pressure to all one pair holdings and hopefully get a fold. I decide to rip it all in, first hand in to start, and he thinks about it for a long time, and ultimately makes the fold. Really nice to get this bluff through one of the first hands of the session and starting to set the tone. Scooping up a pot, and we're in the profit land already. In this next hand, we're still playing four-handed. We pick up aces on the button. There is a cutoff open to $20 and onto me. I think here we're gonna put in a raise. $20 isn't too much and we wanna play for more money. I raise it up to $60 and uh, well, who knew? No one is a believer. Three players make the call. So we're going four ways to a flop. It's a family pot, everyone's in it. Flop comes 10, nine, three, two diamonds. Small blind checks, big blind throws out a bet of $100 here. He's got a relatively short stack, maybe a few hundred dollars behind in this 2-5 table. Cutoff folds, and now I just want to check my card to see if I have a diamond, and I don't. So good news where he can certainly be betting here with a lot of his flush draws, maybe ace high flush draws. So with that said, having a lot of bluffs here with his bet, I put in a raise to $400. Action folds back to him and he thinks about it for a while and ultimately I think he has a decision either ripping his entire stack in or just making the fold and ultimately he ends up folding as well like the first hand. Unfortunate this time that we actually wanted a call but he did say he was open-ended so happy to just take it down the $100 and he doesn't get to see a run out. After that, ace three of hearts were on the straddle and this time there are three players who limp to me I decided to check my option. We're not gonna blow up the pot with this hand. I see a flop for free essentially. Going four ways in a limped pot, flop comes ace, eight, three. Two clubs and a spade. So in this spot with a smaller pot, we actually find a way to have two pair. Action checks to me. I bet out $30 with two pair and only the big one to my right makes the call. We're off to a turn which comes the 10 of spades. He checks again and with two flush draws on the board, I have to assume that I have the best hand a lot of the time here. So I decided to apply some pressure knowing that he's willing to gamble. I overbet the pot to 150. And to this overbet, he makes the call really quickly. So I'm a little confused of what's going on, but let's see a river hoping to see a brick. It comes the king of diamonds. So all things considered, it looks like a brick on this card as the flush draws missed. 
He checks to me for a third time and I've already committed to this really large sizing on the turn. Let's try to commit a larger sizing on this river. I overbet again, this time to a tune of $600. And he thinks about it, he thinks about it, he thinks about it. We're praying for a call when he doesn't snap it off or rip it all in. And ultimately, he tosses in a chip for a call. We show the ace three two pair and scoop this one. This time, scooping up a rather large one for this game. And just like that, we've got chips to play with and we're on a roll. Feeling the run good come our way, we play another four-way limpy poo pot. We have six, seven off suits on the straddle. I check my option. And of course, why wouldn't the flop come four, six, seven, two hearts. Top two pair on a very connected board. The small blind decides to lead out for $20. And I've seen this player be particularly sticky with one pair and draws in the past. So I decided to bump it up and bump up the price pretty high to 100. Surprisingly, upon my raise, the button player makes the call with like $150 left in her stack. So not a whole lot to play for and everyone else folds. So we're going heads up and I guess we're gonna commit stacks no matter what the runout is. The turn isn't a good looking one in the nine of hearts. Not great, some straights get there and obviously the flush draw. Confused as to what the right play is as she only has 150 behind. So we have two pair. I don't think we're gonna fold regardless. So instead of putting myself in a position to check call, maybe we can just jam, put her all in and she can call with worse hands sometimes. I do that, screw it, put it all in, and she snap calls. So we can't be good here, I don't think. The river is a worse looking four. So board pairs, we are pretty much counterfeited essentially. And she has 10 eight of hearts for a straight and a flush. Not a straight flush though, but still good enough to lose this pot. So nice hand to her. She had a combo draw, went for it and binked it. In the following spot with queen 10 of spades, ready to bounce back from the small blind. There's an older person here in early position with a short stack, opens it up to $25. The cutoff makes the call and onto me. I really hate calling out of position, but this is a very playable hand. And I think that the early position open is going to be raising some very strong hands. So let's just see a flop for $25. I call and we're going three ways to a flop. The flop comes king eight three rainbow. Pretty dry flop. It definitely whiffed my specific hand and you're curious as to how this hand is interesting. Well, you're just gonna tune in and find out as action checks around. So it doesn't seem like anyone has much on this board. The turn comes the six of hearts and there are two hearts on the board now, brings in the backdoor flush draw. I check and this early position player now throws out a delayed C bet of $25. Cutoff makes the fold and here with queen high, not a whole lot going on. I certainly can fold, but I just don't see this specific player type to slow play big hands or bet small with strong hands. Just don't think that that's a possibility. So I put the theory to the test and apply some pressure. I put in a check raise to $100 and this player makes the call pretty quickly. So maybe just some sort of draw and hoping that draw can break out. The river comes another eight. Not the best card in the world, as I think sometimes middle pair can play like this. I don't know how often middle pair for this specific player is going to call a check raise, but we have queen high and maybe we can get smaller pocket pairs to fold at best. It seems rather unlikely she has a king. So once again, applying pressure, I bet out $250 and not much of a sweat here. She folds rather quickly saying she missed the flush draw. So I'm happy to get some of my money back and find an unorthodox to bluff. But this one worked out. And for the last interesting hand of the session, 9-4 off suit. We're under the gun. We're on the straddle. Three-way limpy poo pot seems to be the theme of this video. And obviously in this limpy poo pot, the flop comes Jack-9-4 rainbow. Bottom two pair, very disguised at that. The big one bets out $20. And we have two pair. It's certainly time to raise it up, get some more money against Jack X or draws. So I put in a raise to $75. The button limpy pooer folds and the big blind decides that 55 more is a good price and calls. We're off to a turn, which comes the Jack of Spades. Wow, how lovely is this one? Not at all. We're absolutely hating this situation. And this player decides to fake grab for chips, then checks. 
This usually seems like a very weak holding, but given how bad our hand is right now, getting counterfeited once again with two pair, I decided to just check this one back and just get the showdown ideally. The river is now a six, and inconsequential, all the draws missed out, and this player bets out $125. And once again, I just don't think this player is one to bluff much. I'm mainly just beating missed straight draws like Queen 10 or 10 8. We lose to all 9x holdings because our four kicker isn't great. So we just let it go and fold. I think we can find some better spots, better runouts to make money and call. So if she was bluffing me, nice hand, but I think it's more likely she wasn't. And that turn was not the best one for us. Cashing out, walking out of the casino. It's always nice to book a little bit of a win, finally. It's been a little bit. Uh, you guys have watched a lot of vlogs recently where I just get massacred, and that's no fun. So it's nice to book a small win, you know, heading into the Vegas trip. It's good for morale, good for the confidence and everything and all that fun stuff. But um, in the T5, I played for a little bit. I tried to get on the 510. Sadly, it didn't look like a seat was opening up. So um, we played for a few hours in for a thousand out for 1805. So. Um, all things considered, not bad. Probably gonna play some bigger games in Vegas. It depends on what they look like and what the, the lines look like, because it looks like right now, all the cash games, all the tournaments, crazy lines and wait lists to get on the games, but it'll be a fun experience. So hopefully you enjoyed this video. Wish I got more hands, wish I was able to play a little bit more, but at the end of the day, Vegas vlogs coming in the next video. I'm so excited. Hopefully we get some banger content out of it. And there's that. If you made it this far, also I'll be rocking Luckbox hoodies, Luckbox everything. I'm bringing all my hoodies, all my t-shirts um, to Vegas. I'll be repping it. If you want to grab one of these Luckbox merch, if you haven't already, link in the description below. Um, but with that said, thanks so much for watching. See you guys next time. Thanks for the support. Peace.